Hi, everybody. So I took the sections in chapters five and six a little bit out of order um, because I wanted to talk about the the sections that were about types of proof, proof by contrapositive, uh, proof by contradiction, and so forth, all together. And uh, so I skipped a topic from chapter five, uh, which is more about just math. And it's a useful, uh, I think that's introduced in the book to give give us something to prove. But it's um, pretty fundamental to number theory. And so this video is about section 5.2, which is about congruences, plus a little bit extra just to give you a sense of why somebody might be interested in congruences in the first place. So um, what are congruences? Congruence is a, a relationship on uh, integers. And the way it works is the following. You, you pick a natural number. So that's n. That's sometimes called the, uh, the modulus, but we won't worry about that. And now, given this natural number n, if we have any two integers, a and b, we're say, we say they're congruent modulo n if n divides their difference. And we have this notation, a is congruent to b mod n. So whenever we have a definition like this, we should test it out. So we need to pick an n. So we could take, for instance, n equals 7. And then um, we can take two A and B. So for instance, if A were uh, 11 and B were three, then we could ask, is 11 congruent to three mod seven? And this question is the same thing as asking, does seven divide 11 minus 3, which is 8. In other words, is 8 equal to 7x, where x is an integer? And of course, the answer is no, right? 8 is not a multiple of 7. On the other hand, suppose we take 11 and 4, again with n equals 7. Then, um, then a minus b is 11 minus 4, which is 7, and that is a multiple of 7. So we would say that 11 is congruent to 4 mod 7. Um, there's lots of different ways to think about this. One way is that um, if you have a number, but so let's stick with n equals seven, and let's take a number like 13. So we know that you can always do division by, with remainder. So you can always take 13 and divide it by seven, and it goes in one time with a remainder of six. And if you look at a statement like this, 13 equals one times seven plus six, what this is telling you is that 13 minus 6 is a multiple of 7. In other words, 13 is congruent to 6 mod 7. So what we've shown here, and I'm sorry for this banner, what we've shown here is that uh, 13 is congruent to its remainder mod 7. And if you add 7 to 13, so for instance, if you look at 20, which is 2 times 7 plus 6, or 27, which is 3 times 7 plus 6, or 34, which is 4 times 7 plus 6, all of these numbers, 20, 27, 34, and so on, are congruent to 6 modulo 7, because, for example, 20 is congruent to 6 mod 7 because their difference, 20 minus 6, is 14, which is a multiple of 7. But also, any two numbers on this list are congruent to each other. So, for instance, 34 is congruent to 20 mod 7 because 34 minus 20 is 14, which is 2 times 7. And if you look at this entire list here, it goes 6... Uh, 13, 20, 27, 34, and so on. 
all these numbers are congruent to each other mod 7. You can think about this one way is that if you look at all of the, the regular integers, they go um, 0, 1, let's just take the positive ones. Every time you take a step of 7 or a multiple of that, you reach a congruent number. So 1 and 8 are congruent. 2 and 9 are congruent. 3 and 10 are congruent. 4 and 11 are congruent, and so on. So it's like you count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and when you get to 7, well, that's congruent to 0 because 7 minus 0 is a multiple of 7, and then 8 is congruent to 1, and 9 is congruent to 2, and so on. So sometimes people think about this in terms of a clock. You've taken the integers and wrapped them around so that each time you pass another 7, which is the n, you come back to where you started from. So there are lots of different ways about, of thinking about congruence. Um, maybe just to uh, make one other point, we've seen one very special case of congruence quite a bit, which is the situation where n is 2. So if n is 2 um, and you take an integer a, there are really only two possibilities. Either a is even. If it's even, a is a multiple of 2. So a is congruent to 0 mod 2 because being congruent to zero means a minus zero is a multiple of two. So this is the even case. And if a is odd, then a is congruent to one mod two, because a is equal to 2k plus one. That's what it means to be odd. And so therefore, a minus one is a multiple of two. And so a is congruent to one mod two. So being even is the same as being congruent to zero, and being odd is the same as being congruent to one. And those are, I mean, everything is either congruent to zero or congruent to one. It's either a multiple of two or it's one more than a multiple of two. Just like in the seven case, everything is either zero, congruent to zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six mod seven, because when you do division with remainder, everything is always gonna be congruent to its remainder mod seven. And the only possible remainders are zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So congruence has some properties that are similar to equality. And in, in there, these properties will come up later, but uh, it's good to nail them, to at least mention them right now. So here, n is fixed. And the first obvious observation is that every number is congruent to itself mod n. And the proof is, and congruence proofs are always based on this idea we apply the definition. To say that a is congruent to a mod n is to say that n divides a minus a, but a minus a is zero, or n divides zero, because zero is always a multiple of n. So uh, every, n divides zero, any number divides zero. This relation is symmetric. If a divides b, if a is congruent to b mod n, then b is congruent to a mod n. The proof of this is, if a is congruent to b, mod n, then that means that n divides a minus b. a minus b is a multiple of n. So a minus b is some multiple k times n, but then b minus a is minus k times n. So b minus a is also a multiple of n. And this last one, which says that if A is congruent to B and B is congruent to C, then A is congruent to C, is one of the, home, one of the problems in the book, so I'm not going to do it here, but I would like to illustrate it. So let's suppose our N was 5. So 7 is congruent to 2 mod 5, because the remainder when you divide 7 by 5 is 2, or 7 minus 2 is a multiple of 5. And uh, 137 is also congruent to 2 mod 5 because 137 minus 2 is 135, which is a multiple of 5. So we have 7 is congruent to 2 mod 5, and 2 
is congruent to 137 mod 5. And so the third part here says, and so uh, 7 is congruent to 137 mod 5. And you can check that directly, of course. If you take 137 minus 7, you get 130. And that is, in fact, a multiple of 5. Now, I alluded to this uh, earlier, but it's good to just nail it down. If you ask, fix n and a in z, well, n is in the natural numbers, and a is in z, and ask what numbers x are congruent to a mod n. So what is the set of elements x in the integers such that x is congruent to a mod n, and I should have put here x in z? Well, to say that x minus a is a multiple of uh, is congruent, x is congruent to a mod n is the same thing as saying that x, so x congruent to a mod n means that x minus a is a multiple of n for some integer k. Because the definition of congruence is that x minus a is a multiple of n. And that's all I've written here, that x minus a is a multiple of n for some integer k. So in other words, x is equal to a plus kn, where k is in z. So just, I mean, as an example, if, if n were 5 and a were 3, then the set of x such that x is congruent to 3 mod 5 is the same thing as the collection of 3 plus 5k for k in z. And we can just think about k. So, so I mean, if k is 0, it's 3. And then we add multiples of 5. So 3, 8, 13, 18, 23, dot, dot, dot. But we can also subtract multiples of 5 minus 2, minus 7, minus 12, dot, dot, dot. This is the set that I've written here. And this is called an arithmetic progression. You may have seen this term before. An arithmetic progression is a sequence of integers where the, the difference between successive terms is always the same. So the difference between successive terms here is always 5. So the collection of elements x which are congruent to a fixed a mod n is an arithmetic progression of all of the things of the form a plus kn. Another way to describe this is, this is all integers with remainder 3 when divided by 5. Because if you have a number which is, a, if you take a number, any number n, you can always divide it by 5 and write it as 5k plus r, where r is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. This is the division with remainder property, right? You take out as many 5s as you can, and whatever's left is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And this equation tells you that n minus r is a multiple of 5, so n is congruent to r mod 5. So being congruent to r, here I've used 5, but I could have done any, any little n. Being congruent to a mod n means you have remainder a when divided by n. And the collection of all elements congruent to a given number mod n is the collection of all integers which have that remainder when you divide by n.